Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Bourbon Over Baseball with your hosts, Bob, co-host Jeff, and Matt. And we have a special guest today. We have Kevin from The Athletic. What's going on, guys? Hello. Um, Yo. So if you guys uh, paid attention on the Discord or on Twitter or Facebook, you would have known uh, that LMB Show in general kind of had a little resurgence uh, just recently uh, with the COVID stuff and with a little bit of... Um, help from Kevin. It was uh, talked about in The Athletic, which I, I know had a lot of positive reviews and uh, talking points. Um, and it was really cool to obviously, as part of us, me and Matt and uh, again, Peter were interviewed, which was great. Uh, but sometimes not everything makes the cut. So we wanted to get Kevin on and talk to him a little bit about maybe what didn't make the cut and maybe other things that he was into. I guess first thing, have you played since you, uh, you know, did the article? You know, it's funny, Bob, I haven't. I, I have my shoe box of cards. Uh, my old cards and first of all talking to you guys and seeing the comments I realized my collection like wasn't that good I would not have been able to create that good of a team I was I thought that I spent so much of my like um, you know uh, babysitting money and allowance on cards for like two years but I I could have bought a lot more cards I'm, I'm like I, I'm like where are all my um, foil cards anyways so my wife is a big sports fan she's definitely down to play at some point um but it's that we've actually had like beautiful weather in Chicago. So every time we got downtime, we've been going outside. And I know Matt will tell me, cause I remember him saying, you just go on the porch and just go play. Uh, yeah. Soda. So <laughs> we can still do that. But um, no, I have not, that was my rambling answer to tell you. I have not played yet, but it's definitely uh, on the list of things to do is we are still kind of locked down. Here. Yeah. I mean, I don't think my collection when I was growing up was impressive until I, I think got out of college and decided I was going to complete it or the, at least the 2000 version I know. I think Jeff just completed the 2000 and 2001, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I was in the same boat, man. I thought I like had this extensive collection. I was like, yeah, I'm like really close, and I was not close, you know. <laughs> so, no, I just like I got quarantine, you know, got bored, started looking to it. it wasn't great timing because everything skyrocketed in price. But you know what? I'm like two cards away from like I'm only like the 2000 and 2001. I'm a purist, you know. So. Um, but man, I'm close. So it's a good feeling though. Yeah. And the Facebook yeah. group is really good to also with, um, uh, sort of buy, sell trade. Um, they, they're really about sort of like, Hey, here's my collection. Does anybody need, I'm looking for these three cards, which has been nice too, or obviously eBay and stuff like that. Uh, I luckily, I just, I, I've always had the 2000 since I was in college. So I use that. And then Jeff has 2001. So I just use his cards when like, I want to play 2001 versions. So the big question, I guess, Kevin, is what didn't make it? I know we had uh, a couple. Uh, it was actually a great article. I, I was actually really pleased to see the, um, the the design guy from like the original Wizards team when he did it. Uh, that he was uh, like happy that people were still playing or talking about it, and, and I was like, oh, that's pretty boss. Um, but like, was there anything that uh, that really sparked at you that you didn't that didn't make the cut? Yeah, well, to, to answer that question, Bob, if you don't mind, I, I could actually tell you a little about how the story kind of came to be because that kind of answers the question a little bit. So, you know, during this time of no sports um, at the Athletic, we've all been just trying to find unique, um, unique things to to write about. You know, that that don't require live sports, and we decided to do a collectibles memorabilia week. And I'm scrolling through and I'm reading some of the different stories that people have already kind of signed up to do. And, and I was a huge card collector growing up um, and then eventually got got really into showdown for kind of two years, like I talked about in the story. Um, and I was trying to think and I was like, you know, I feel like I, I wonder if showdown is still a thing. I really didn't know. So I reached out to the editor and he played it. So he was like all over. He's like, yes, awesome. do it. And then I started Googling, I found you guys, and I found the Twitter accounts, the Facebook accounts. So I was like, okay, there's definitely an audience for this. Then I had to find people that were part of the game from 20 years ago. And that was tricky. Yeah. And what's interesting is, um, to take you inside the reporter's notebook for a sec, I the Wikipedia page for LB Showdown lists the guys who originally designed the game. But none of them were like on Twitter, and it was hard to find them via Google. I kind of had some LinkedIn. And then it listed the four world champions of the game. One of those guys was Scott Forster. I found him on Facebook um, and he was literally the first person I talked to for the story. And I felt a little bad because Scott actually isn't a huge part of the story as it came to be, but that is the main part that was left out. So Scott and I talked for like 45 minutes. Um, this was back in mid-April. 
Um, and you know, he was a, a little different than you guys because he was a he was a magic player. Well, I, I was, was a magic a ma- player as well. Right. I forgot about that with you, Bob. Yeah. But you no, know, so he was he played magic, was at a magic tournament, lost, was just bored at the card shop, picked up a deck of MLB Showdown. It's like I'll, I like the Cardinals. I'm a big baseball fan. I'll give us a whirl. And he kind of got hooked. Um, so one of the things that he and I talked about at length. And then I also talked about this with all the design guys. This is probably the biggest part that got cut out is how the game kind of evolved. Um, because Scott would explain to me, and you saw this a little bit, if you go to the athletic story, some guys mentioned this later on in the comments. There were the, these guys essentially would break the game. Mm-hmm. They would use the strategy cards to find ways to where you could essentially intentionally walk in 12 runs from your opposing team, which then allows you to gain all these strategy cards and you come back and you win and these scores are ridiculous. They're not baseball. Like I know it's not the way you guys play, um, but that was what Scott did. That's what these guys did. And, um, and so talking to worth worth Wolpert, who took over kind of as the main guy for the game in around 2001, 2002, um, you know, he told me that was the biggest challenge was continuing to make this game something that worked for both parties and keeping up with, and then you guys all know about the 2002 Barry Bonds card. Mm-hmm. That kind of, in its own way, broke the game a little bit um, because it was just like his numbers were out of control and didn't fit in the algorithm. So they kind of had to try to make these different things work. And then the original designers, so the guys who created the game 20 years ago, here's a fun fact. I actually did not talk to them until two days before the story ran. Oh, man. They're the last people I, I finally tracked them down. Last people I talked to, they still work for Wizards of the Coast. And yeah, as Bob, as you said, they, they loved seeing how many people are still playing when I told them about you guys. Um, but they kind of said, they go, that's every card game ever. You oh, yeah. just are going to have these different things. So what I wanted, what I made clear in the original draft, and again, this part got cut out, was the problems with the game from the strategy card element of it, that's not why the game fell apart. Like, that's not why MLB Showdown ceased to exist. It was, it was a business decision. Oh, yeah. Like, first and foremost. That was just, it was totally business reason. But talking to Scott and talking to some of the guys who designed it, that was definitely at least part of, um, like, just some conflict, I guess, on the tour or, or, or with the game, with people playing. It was just something they dealt with. So that was probably the biggest part that I left out, was learning about the different ways they all viewed this kind of conflict between the Magic players who play and the baseball players yep. who play. That was a lot more than I think you bargained for, but I hope I answered your question. No, and, and again, and me being a Magic player, I, I haven't played in probably a few years, but I obviously I still know it. I, I played it forever. Um, and they're, they are statistic, strategic. I mean, uh, Jeff will know this. One of the guys in our league is a Magic player, Matt the Cat. Um, and he just plays the game because he just likes cards. And he likes hanging out with people. So he will literally get the you know, the Excel spreadsheet of all the cards and literally break down his own formula. I think he was using Python to break down yeah. the, like this guy, in my opinion, is a 10 on base with 16 uh, double gives, give him, I give him a, a rating and then he rated, he would rank the cards and do it that way. Um, so they, they do this naturally magic players. They do this. <laughs> um, they yeah, do I mean, this. It's how they do. Yeah, like the, the one thing that was funny, like when I first joined the crew, like, every single person kind of approached the game in a different way. And I think it kind of like lends itself well to that, that could be a magic person just wanting the next game. You could be a baseball card collector. Like I just liked cards and I liked this as a kid, but like everybody was kind of approaching it a different way, you know? So, uh, so yeah, so it's kind of in, it kind of lends itself into that slight identity crisis that I, that I think they had. And you even hinted at it that they had, like pretty much unlimited money when they started. And then like towards the end was a little different, you know, they, they didn't have as much of the Pokemon money coming in. So, <laughs> yeah. And I should also mention too, is that um, when I first talked to Scott and learned about this whole element of the game, I'm sitting here, I texted my sister who I, I played a lot. Most of the time I played with her. Um, I was like, did we ever use the strategy cards? <laughs> and she's like, I have no idea. I'm like, I feel like we didn't. I think, I feel like, I remember we did, we did some stolen bases and some stuff with like, if you know, trying to get a guy home from second on a single, but like we were like way down low. Like somebody in the, in the chat or in the comment section asked if I ever played competitively. I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, so you it was might, kind of, it was kind of fun. That played competitively, haven't, didn't you? 
you you're the only one that played competitively right i was in a league like at a card shop but it was it was like everybody was like in my age range there was no Mm -hmm. no no strategy cards anything like that it was all for fun yeah, yeah same and that's here. the problem I think, and I've talked to Clutch a lot. I know the two owners. Well, I guess two. I don't know how many there are now, but there are at least two of the owners that do Clutch, and uh, I think they have a great game. Obviously, it's based on 2002, 2005, and they have a lot of legal battles they have to do because they can't do the pictures or say certain team names, um, so they have to f- walk this fine line. But they have a lot of strategy cards, and I've played their game with them, and I said, guys, like it's a drag. Like, it takes me, like, over an hour to get a game done. And even longer when I was playing online uh, to some other guys in different states. Uh, I'm like, the strategy cards slow it down so much. I'm like, you could make rules and do this. And they go, I know, but, like, you kind of need them. And it adds the strategic element, I guess. And I think the problem also is once you started it, how do you how do you stop it? And, and unless right. you just say, F it. Like, we're going to just eliminate the strategy cards and now it's going to be a baseball card game that has dice and we're going to have i like i said what we did was uh like manager decisions and i think that could have been a, a player card that you would just have with us a, a list of options that you could do almost like a cheat sheet and actually what i think clutch did really good is they did uh stadiums and stadiums had effects and that that is a really nice way to say uh we're going to make a little strategic play um they had like uh, certain stadiums that had really big outfields would, would lend themselves better for pitchers and like small stadiums uh, or like uh, uh, was it Great America the, you know home run parks they would say okay that that lends a, a home run advantage and a, and to Reds players I think they did a, they do a really good job with that but even they it gets overly complicated they like have too many layers of rules and I think I've told this to them and I I've said this a lot the game has to be I can pick it up and play with my ten year old kid and I I just I want to pick it up and play with them. We just watched on TV. We wanted to play baseball this weekend. I just got to pick it up and play it with like an eight-year-old, a 10-year-old. You can't make it too complicated, but you can't make it like like literally a, a luck game either because then it's like kind of uh, every time I roll 20, I win or, you know, it's kind of lame. So, I mean, that was my I, – I think they could have just said, okay, the strategy cards are a layer of the game. But, yeah, any type of um, strategy card base game – they're they're gonna people are gonna find a way to to take advantage and that's why magic has so many ban list cards because people find ways to break magic (laughs) yeah and the the other thing too with the the different strategies and like you know realizing what i learned about the game was scott i asked him i said do you have any like do you have any cards left and he goes actually sold he's sold every card he had except for carrie wood (laughs) because carrie wood won him the national championship so he has it framed oh nice and what i so i so I, he sent me the picture of it which we didn't end up getting in the story but carry wood is a one control and i remember looking at that being like oh i always use guys who were like five and six control i never would have and he said no 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 like the guy, yeah it's the uh, version. Yeah, yeah i think so let me just i can try to call up the um I think I know picture. exactly the card because this reminds me of uh, James's strategy uh, that you took over his team, Jeff, in our league because he yeah, all had I like took over. one and two control pitchers and like an all lineup of tens. Yeah, he had. I'm pretty sure he might have had that Kerry Wood card and like yeah. Blake Stein on the Royals. Like, yeah. Um, but yeah, I never. I I kind of nuked it and had no success with it. So clearly, I was not on the right path to success. Well, yeah, th- that was such an interesting strategy. And when he sent it to me, I was looking at the card and like it kind of came back to me. And I remember being when I was a kid, I was probably like, "Why isn't Kerry Wood a six? I'm not going to use him if he's not, you know, a five or a six. It's like that's my guy. You know, I'm a Chicago guy, so like I loved Kerry Wood. So I was like trying to like kind of rectify, like, wait a second, like why why are we not why are we not using this guy? Mm-hmm. Um, but but yeah, it was funny because he said like one of the things he kind of alluded to was i'm just kind of calling up the card right now just so i can kind of look at it um so he okay so he um it was 18 to 20 got you on base for carry wood yep and he was telling me that he really didn't care about control he hated when um like maddox was his pitcher and someone roll a 16 and get on base this is exactly why like I don't just play with was... like uh, 14, 1 through 14 out pitchers because I hate people rolling 15s right. and getting on base. <laughs> and actually, yeah. uh, so I, I just thought of... 
I was say Peter likes uh, that happy medium. He likes a four one through sixteen out pitcher because. He feels like it's that nice range where you just got enough control to get the advantage, and then you have just enough outs that you're probably going to get him out. And, and that's it's funny because P- Python was, guy, yeah. I, I, you know, the guy he convinced me to do yep. the complete opposite of this in like best control, you know, be, just you know what I mean. So like, and and this is kind of again the beauty of the game. Like what we're doing at this moment is like you know, and I think Scott probably knows better than all of us here because yeah. <laughs> like, he can see one, but. Um, but it's kind of like the great part of this is arguing this point, you know? Yeah, I'm curious how that worked because I would get so mad in the game. Like, if you roll an eight with a one control, all of a sudden you have a nine or a ten up in his chart, and it's like, uh... and then they're hitting home runs. Yeah, they're also all the kind of strategy cards, did. man. Right. I mean, do you, that's so do you get boot? I'd never use them, so I don't even know. Like, do you get oh this pitcher you add plus four to your swing? There's lots of stuff. Like there was like if you threw like if you struck out the side, there's like a boost for like the next inning. Like sometimes oh, okay. there was like extra innings you could add for like one, two, three outs. Um, I, I know there was like lefty, righty uh, matchups where you could do. Lot, and if he built his deck, which again, that's what I don't like about it. Like he built this deck to sort of take advantage of that exact thing versus I think playing as a specific manager and saying, you know, I think as a manager, I would steal in this situation. I think as a manager, I should sacrifice bunt. Or uh, I know we've been talking a lot about playing a NL only uh, draft and that way we can play with bench players and having pinch hitters because then when you have the pitcher you know come out um, even though I'm not a big fan of the D, uh, the I like a universal DH in real baseball um, I think in a, in a showdown card game the the pitcher batting makes it way more strategic <laughs> there was another um, there was another rule change from 0304 that Scott told me was, um, you could put players on your bench for one fifth yep. of their normal price, mm-hmm. but you couldn't put them on the field until the seventh inning. Yep. <laughs> and yeah, so he was telling me about that. So you'd have people like situationally pinch hitting Barry Bonds. Yeah. And yeah. then you create like a murderer's row of um, things. And one thing that um, Worth Wolper told me, and, and for people that, that read the story know that Worth was obviously instrumental to the story and it was really cool to just hear from him about all this stuff. Um, he said that, and this, shouldn't, this won't surprise you guys, the resources they had at Wizards of the Coast for Magic was a lot different than they had for LB <laughs> Showdown. So when Worth wanted to game test and when he needed people to, to really like run tests on some of these things and actually play the game and play it out, he'd have to essentially bribe them with pizza. And he was finding <laughs> baseball fans who weren't maybe in R&D. Maybe it was just someone in customer service or somebody in other departments. He was just trying to track down these baseball fans because he needed people to test these out. So I think it also came to a point yeah. where, like, again, you can break any card game you play, but MLB Showdown, like, they did not have the resources to point. keep up with the guys at Magic, the, the Magic players who played Showdown who were finding these ways. They just, they, they couldn't, they weren't, fine, they weren't fast enough. And Magic, they had all the resources, and you could obviously follow right. um, the, you know, the economics of that. Um, but so that was kind of the biggest part that, that ended up on the cutting room floor, um, and I think you guys probably would have loved that. I think a lot of people would have liked that part because it does get a little bit of the weeds. And uh, my, my, my editors prefer I don't write novels. Uh, <laughs> <so>. <laughs> Just depends on how much what you want to read. I mean, I, I, I've read a, a lot. I know um, I know uh, Matt specifically has loved his athletic membership because he's been like reading yeah. all these articles lately on baseball. <laughs> good. Yeah, yeah good. You, got, you got a good, good uh, sign up for me because I forgot to cancel before my trial ended. <laughs> perfect, <laughs> no, th- that was never the plan. It was going to stay sign up. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, no, I, 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 I didn't realize I clicked like uh, the uh, like year one and not like the trial. So yeah, I'm in for a year. You're in. Well, you know what? I'll, I'll tell you guys this, and I want to thank you and, and your listeners, anybody who jumped in. Um, this was, again, so for those of you who don't know, like my normal day job is I'm, I'm our Chicago Bears beat writer. So, you know, that that's what, I, that's what I do for a living. So this was totally different than anything I do. And I have metrics on everything I write. This story was one of my most successful stories I've done. Um, and that's a, that's a credit to all you guys for helping out. All the MLB Showdown fans were so excited about it. Um, this got a lot more people reading and engaged with the story. Um, I really had no expectations for it, um, but I think people maybe above who had no idea what MLB Showdown was 
um, but just happen to kind of help edit it. Um, so I, you know, I think it really speaks to, as you guys have seen, you know, the real passion for the game. Bob, I know you were replying to some of the commenters oh, yeah. who were like, want it, who like want to keep playing and want to keep going. I mean, the fact I think and now, granted, I, I juice these numbers a little bit because I try to respond to a lot of comments. Um, but I think it went up to like 84 comments, which is crazy um, for a story like that. Oh, yeah. um, so that was really uh, that was really cool to see. Yeah, I, tried, I, think I like saw anybody it. write anything like I could that I knew I could add two cents to. I was like, oh, I could I could talk. I, I know this part or that part. But I mean, I think even our numbers um, on our blog yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like crazy by like noon, we were at over a thousand views. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the the greatest LV shutdown dot blogspot dot com. Yeah, um, there's the shameless plug. <laughs> no, I mean, I'll, spe I'll speak for myself, just like I know not getting interviewed, but like just like being so incredibly. So I, I think I'm speaking for a lot of people, like more than anything, just like, of course, I'm a part of with this crew, of you know, these crazies doing this podcast and stuff. So it was just cool to see this. But like, it was also just kind of like a like a single incredible moment of just like, like, just, yeah, like, this is this is this is the game that I love. And I think it, it the one thing we've kind of hinted at is like it it means so many different things to different people like just like bob's example of playing with your eight-year-old yeah. kid or you know for some it might be scott like being competitive and having this you know the framed carry wood like um so no it was a really it was a really special moment and like i know i could probably get more soppy about it but like there's that the one dude on the facebook who won that giant randy johnson like floor mat it was like a poster but it was as big as a rug he had won it from one of those tournaments. I was like, that thing is sick. He's like, yeah, hanging up in my house or something. I was like, oh, my <laughs> God. Well, that, that's awesome to hear, too, because I, I will say, um, you know, I've been I've been a sports writer for um, 10, 11 years now, and I don't think I've written anything that's gotten that kind of response. That really, like, for one thing, it was fun to write something personal to me mm -hmm. um, that I enjoyed. But to see how many people – either were like you guys who still play it or were just people who had forgotten about it and it was like a nostalgia trip for them. Yep. Like that was just such a joy um, to be a part of. So it's like, it, it's, it was just really like, I never felt that feeling before. I was like, wow, I've really, you know, it was that, that quote from worth in the story, you know, nostalgia is a hell of a drug. Mm -hmm. I'm like sitting here being like, what else from the early 2000s and nineties <laughs> can I write about? Until <laughs> sports come back? Well, I know that, especially during this COVID time, I and mean, I saw a lot of the comments on the article, people saying, oh my God, I, I used to play this. I can't believe you're writing about this. But I think there were some other ones there. And I know someone on Facebook just wrote about this, that they just picked, the, they forgot about this game, sort of like you did, found it in a shoebox and started playing with their kid. Um, and I think, he, if I'm not mistaken, Jeff, he had, um, he only had a handful of cards and a bunch of people on Facebook sent him a bunch of commons. I think it yeah, just happened their like, day. They were like, I got a, I got a box of commons. I'll send you the extras that I have. Like, because they're, they're not pretty much not worth anything to the people that have doubles of the commons, no. and they loaded this guy back up so he could play with his kid. I was like, awesome. Right, that, was, that was like that was one of the things I've been doing. It's just like I've got a box of duplicate cards over here that are aren't worth anything. Now, I'm not gonna say they're not worth anything to me, but their their cost is like not in like their value is not in money. It's more of like if I can get them to the right people who just want to play, then like that's that's my goal. And like I think like all of this like. You know, I just imagine myself just kind of being not in Cleveland, not around these guys. And I know we're doing this virtually, but, you know, if I were to search it, if I had a kid, we looked it up, like I would want to find this type of community. And, um, and, and yeah, like it's, it's important. And it, so anyway, yeah, it's a, that's why I feel like the story was just kind of a, a cultivation moment of all that, you know, just kind of put into one thing. So it, it, mm. it felt really good. Yeah. It was cool to be like, you know, here's this game that we've been playing since we were kids and it's like this article is bringing it back and then to be like pull it up on my phone and be like look i'm in this article yeah <laughs> about, about this game well the other thing too and i just wanted to kind of go back to the idea of um what did it make the final copy and it kind of goes back to my conversation with scott is um how much this really took off that those 2000 2001 like that the at the at the 2001 all-star game they held the first national championship and they made that youtube video that i'm sure you guys have mm -hmm. seen before and i, I embedded it in the story um and, and these guys were like meaty major league baseball players there were players at you know these things doing signings and then there was the marketing um, person i talked to who's now at DraftKings, telling me that he was traveling every week to town going to card shops during the day 
and then would bring the card shop owner to that city's baseball game that night. Like that's how popular wow. this game was that first you know year or two. Um, it was just it really just took off for them, and they were really you know they they just did a lot of stuff to kind of help help market it with the players and stuff. So I thought that that stuff was really cool. And I will say, and I'm sure you guys kind of saw this, which is interesting. You know the the guy you know the the representative from the MLBPA. You know, he was saying, he goes, I would have loved to keep doing this. You know, obviously he, you know, the, the flip side is, well, maybe you should have made your license a little cheaper, but, you know, they can't control that. You know, I mean, they can, but he can't. You know, there's a, there's a price for those things. Um, but it was interesting to see how much, and he actually told me that he never, he, he did play it, but it wasn't like, he's like, yeah, this is not the type of thing that's really in my wheelhouse, but I have such great memories of how popular that was. And for him to say that there's nothing major league baseball has licensed that has had the type of just passionate following as this i thought was also oh, really cool. really kind of a striking yeah. thing from the story oh, yeah and i think they really i mean i think what was so cool about it and i would say matt and jeff in the same way was how strikingly um vibrant and uh, eye-catching it was in 00 and 01 um, when it came out it just it would just grab your attention a foil was so incredibly uh, vibrant i mean it, it, a perfect cut out of the card it, you know, the foil glowed amazing. Having this amazing player that you used to watch on TV all of a sudden glowing in your hand was really cool. And and, and that's that's that was a cool part of Magic, too, when you open up a pack and get a foil. But you're talking about just, like, sort of fantasy monsters at that point. You, now you're now you're talking about maybe a guy that you've idolized, you know, watching baseball in your hand, foil, you know, opening up, like, a pack of tops or upper deck. But at the same time, you could take it one step further because instead of putting it in your binder... You can now go to your down the street to your buddy's house and play him with that sweet new you know Mark McGuire that you just pulled out of the pack, and it looks so dang cool. I think that's that they had such good momentum with that, and yeah, I think it kind of sucked that it, it kind of it fell apart or whatever. And that, and that's what we try to do now is is try to make it you know visually look good, uh, and we try to obviously like with this R and D where you're saying before that they couldn't put so much time. We like <laughs> we're like. We, we play it and then we also are making it so we like know what's working and what's not working and 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 what cool fun formats to change and and uh, little house rules that people can add to, to make it better I mean that's and I think that's what's doing so well. I know we like I said we had talked to um, his name's Colby about his earlier sets but we are uh, we're trying to work with him then also I think going into the future uh, to sort of make it uh, even you know, more expansive and, and and hopefully get more people involved with just uh, playing again and and hearing all these cool, fun leagues and people drafting and, and whatnot. <laughs> I was going to say, like, what would I know? You kind of mentioned the fan reaction, which I was going to ask about anyway. But it, it, you know, we heard it, it was just great to this. But was there was there anything else kind of while researching this or coming out of this that just surprised you kind of even more? Just kind of like something you didn't know or you did that was kind of reinforced or you know just kind of came out of the blue on this. Mm -hmm. Well, I, for one thing, you know, I, I didn't even know that Wizards of the Coast made MLB Showdown, to be yeah. honest, until I started researching this. I just went to the card store and picked up this cool baseball card game. Uh, with my, my sister plays Dungeons and Dragons, so she's very familiar kind of with the, um, the whole Wizards background. So just learning about how those guys kind of came up with this idea. Um, and also for the people that made it, you know, these are people who grew up on Stratomatic. Oh, yeah. That was their game. And, and so the, 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 the influence that Stratomatic had, I thought was really interesting. Um, you know, some of the feedback, I think, you know, going back to what we were talking about earlier, seeing how many people that had just like defined their summers was like playing this game was just such a cool outpouring. And I, I even had, um, you know, people that I worked with were like, like, we're just, like I'm so happy you wrote about this. Like I played this game, um, you know, my, my editor, um, she hadn't heard of it, and then she asked her fiance, and he goes, "Oh my God!" He like ran to his closet, like found some you know, old cards, you know. So just like these different ways that people were were into the game. So yeah, I loved learning about kind of how the game came to be, the connection to Magic, and how that kind of helped build the game. Um, and then just yeah, just as we've been talking about, just seeing kind of the the outpouring, um, and then hearing from me personally, hearing from my parents reminding me how obsessed I was with this thing. Um, you know, I, I led with that story of I spent the entire day on Bainbridge Island just playing MLB Showdown on the back of a pickup truck. I didn't even go explore the island. That's all we did. 
And actually, guys, I'll show you this. This is in the shoe box. I'll show it. Is, I'll expri- explain this because it's a podcast. This is a little piece of paper that has my lineup. Oh, man. <laughs> so, so I found these in the shoe box. So this was my, what I wrote down, LB Showdown first lineup. So it's uh, Terry Shumpert's leading off. Oh, yeah. You got to have that, that 10 on base, second baseman. Great card. The only reason I ever knew who Mitch Molosky was was because of LB Showdown. Yeah, <laughs> the same. So, a 10. <laughs> Um, Tony Fernandez getting that. That's a great foil card. I'm glad I still have that. Oh, one. yeah. Um, at, at the bottom one. of the order. Um, Bobby Abreu, I remember, was one of my favorite players. In the uh, that's game. a that's expensive so it just, one. It's like 560, I think. Yeah. So then, then, then I had like a backup lineup. I have another piece of paper. It's like 5,000 <laughs> oh, yeah. point lineup. And, and, and it's funny, too, because you, then, you know, you get stuck in this nostalgia where players are now, you're like, why? why do I know who Scott Sullivan is? Like, oh, he was like one of my middle relievers that I like to use in, <laughs> you know, in LB Shona. It's just like such a wild thing. It's like, that's kind of like the way you associate these guys. I think it was, it's been, it's been a kind of a fun trip down memory lane and really fun to see how many other people went down their own memory lanes with me. That reminds Maybe. me of Doug Brocale for you, Jeff. Oh. Oh yeah. Well, it's the Doug Brocale story. I won't get, get into, but he's a legend in my book, but um, but it's funny you bring that up just cause like I, same thing, found like the, the card, saw my lineup, which like yours was just stacked. I didn't have any idea. I didn't care about salary, which is great. I just wanted to hit home runs, but, but like one thing, like when we've been doing this, uh, we've been doing a series where we go through the, the, the original 2007 team by team. Um, and like, I know just like the four of us and then other people we've talked to, like those like first packs you got, like those first deck however you want to put it like basically your first lineup you were putting yeah. together like those players seem to be cemented in everybody's minds you know and i have it too and like i know almost everybody has it and like they could be t- just awful just a terrible player and again a player that none of us should know but like i feel like those players are like cemented in all of our collective heads whether it be in like our first lineup or they just exist in the set so it's, it's kind of funny how that like i've said this before but like that the players in the 2000, 2001, and there's so many in there that like have not been forgotten because of this game, especially like with, with like, you know, I, I'm a, like, I'm a baseball fan. I'm a sports fan, but like, I wouldn't say I'm a, you know, I know the bench players on the 2000 or 1989 Baltimore Orioles, Orioles very well. You know what I mean? Like right. so. second lineup right there in the bullpen. Doug Brocale. <laughs> there you go. Sorry, that's my 5,000 5, 5, point lineup. Yeah. Oh, he's, dude, he's the best. So the long story short is that, uh, again, I get really long story short, is that I created a, my, my Twitter account is based on, was originally based on him. And his, uh, I was like tweeting some things, not like ad, as him, but like finding Doug Brocale stories because he's like a pitching coach for, I think, the Texans. Uh, or the Rangers, excuse me, not the Texans. And so anyway, I like tweeted something. His daughter found me, called me out, said I can impersonate him. Um, it was it was pretty great. <laughs> and like I backed down quickly. Turns out the the second layer of the story is the guy whose team I took over in our league did the same thing unknowingly to me. So we had multiple Doug Brocale impersonators coming out of our specific showdown league. So anyway, he's he's the man. I uh, it's, I feel like it's like a dream to meet him, tell him a story. He won't care. Maybe he'll sign a card. It'll be great. <laughs> so. yeah, there's lots of those cards. I mean, we talked about it during, like you said, during the breakdowns. I remember like Mark Quinn, not good at all. So I still don't even know a single statistic no. of his, but he played on my team and he did really good for me. So I know Mark Quinn and I right. loved him playing on my team. And I was going to say during, while you were showing that lineup, I, I was trying to look for it real quick, but I could not find it. I, and I told this to Colby when I, when I was a kid, I, I would I made my own LB Sean cards. Like I drew like on a piece of paper and I colored it in, made my own stats, and then I like took like packing tape and like laminated it so that I could play with it. I couldn't I couldn't find where they are, but I have two of them somewhere in this in this house of mine. But that's like, how, like, like how much I was into it like back then, I guess, and how <laughs> early I was a card creator, if you could say that. that that's the beginning of Bob creating these cards, yeah. apparently. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. the earliest version of, yeah. of custom card creation. Yeah, and I think that was cool too because I mean, obviously I was a kid and I was like, I think I made me as a as a player, so I was like, oh, I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be a second baseman. I'm, I'm pretty good at fielding right now in baseball. I think I'm, I'm I'll give myself this arm, and I know we've done, um, I guess a, a super sidebar, but I know we've made uh, like movie players, uh, like um, 
Yeah, I did Ricky Vaughn. Yeah, Ricky Vaughn. Uh, we've done some other things. Like I, I did the statistics uh, from Major League, and I think I did some of the statistics from League of Their Own uh, for some of those if we ever make cards for, uh, for some of the celebrity players. But I thought that'd be a really cool thing to do too. It's like, and somebody did that I think on on Facebook as well. But uh, is to have some of these like random people from these movies and what their statistics would have been and what kind of showdown card they would have had. And I think that's a pretty fun, uh, weird element that you could bring into the game as well. Um, I, I, one thing I, I remember I, I mentioned to you that I uh, that obviously didn't make it, but um, what I thought would have been cool if Shodan was now was like Trevor Bauer and like I think Marcus Stroman or some of the two people I, I see all the time talking on uh, Twitter, like what they would have said with people playing Showdown with their cards, like, son mm. of a bitch, Trevor Bauer, you blew the game for me. Like, what the hell? <laughs> like, and, and he's so... Yeah. He's so out there. He would be like, I could easily see him like going to the company like, what the hell? You used the worst picture of mine. You gave me some terrible statistics. I know. <laughs> like the Gallo thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like Gallo and MLB The Show. Yeah. Uh, do you play MLB The Show yeah. at all, Kevin? No, I stopped. But I did see that Gallo oh. clip. Oh, um, my God. But so you know, you funny. See, <laughs> yeah, but you see that with players in video games. Like the yep. you know NFL players talk about their Madden rating and stuff like that. So you could, and because the showdown, it's just right there on the card. It's so easy for you them to like acknowledge it that would be pretty cool that was something that also might not have been in the story as much as i originally had it was i did ask everybody except for you guys because i know you guys still play whether this game could still be successful today and they all were like yeah they all said absolutely they said you know if it just if you could just make the money work yes like you could and also think about for one thing we're all inside so i think card games have this heightened um, you know, made popularity right now just because of the situation in the world. But, you know, with iPads, I mean, you guys, well, you guys obviously, you, you, you're using Discord to kind of communicate and, and play these games, but like there's a way to probably make this an iPad game. Oh, yeah. Um, there's probably different ways that you could do this. Um, so I thought that was interesting too, that like everybody I talked to was like, yeah, this could still be uh, popular today. So it, was, it wasn't like, oh, no, no, that was just an early 2000s. Like, no, 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 like that would, and, and, and trading card games are like still, you know, Magic's obviously Magic, but they're not, they're not gone. So like they're no, you know, and Magic, still... Magic has a big surge right now for the online version. Um, mm -hmm. People are playing it digitally in a lot, and one, uh, a couple of people on the Facebook group, Jeff knows this, and I shared it with you, Matt, was that they took, uh, I think it's, t uh, t tape tabletop t t yeah, t t tabletop simulator. Yeah, so yeah, it's a TTS. Steam game. So through Steam, which is a digital platform, you can buy games on. There's a there's a tabletop thing where you can create your own game, and these guys did it. They put in the like the 2002 showdown cards, and they got it to work. Where the card, all the card images are in there, and you roll a dice. I think you have to self move it, don't you? I don't think they're yeah. programmed in. It's like you're just dragging around a cursor around, but yeah, they basically digitize the game, which everybody's been kind of asking for or wanting for like two years and now i feel like there's there's kind of like endeavor that a bunch of people are involved in trying to do it for like the entire game which is yeah. it, it's a, it. it's a lofty are, thing and that was two guys doing it just on their own um and that's why i think like a person like tops who already has the tops app which is tops blunt and you could, there's already card collecting aspect which is an interesting thing because you're sort of collecting digital cards um and i know people spend money on that um but but you're not doing anything really with that card and i think you could take the tops bunt app or a version thereof and say okay now you can spend money with downloadable content dlc and say i'm gonna buy a pack just like in magic and i'm gonna play a tournament and i can play this tournament play online with other people and uh tops has tops has the easiest way because tops owns the exclusive rights with mlbpa and mlb for trading cards so they could easily just i think tie it in with their with their packaging oh, the, the harder one would be maybe i think is it donruss is it Donruss or Bowman? Yeah, Donruss. Donruss. So Donruss makes cards too, but they don't have the same agreement as Topps does. So you'll see if you look at a Donruss card, um, at least most of them. Sometimes they do have these random ones. But I'm pretty sure almost all Donruss cards, they won't say the team name, um, and they'll have the image, like the logo on the helmet photoshopped out or the hat. So they can't use the logo of the team. They can't say the Yankees. They can't say... Uh, you know MLB, but they can have they can have. I think the card I saw was like player. Yeah, they can have Acuna. You know, if he's turned his yeah. back this way, it says Acuna in his jersey. You don't see the Braves. They blur out the helmet. They say ATL, and that's all they do. And they could even do it. 
um, if you just I, use I, those type of images. I think that's a big detriment to baseball is because you look at like like NBA 2K, they have a mobile app of a card game that has nothing to do with like the video game, but they have a card game and they could easily do something like that. But, and you hear it with, uh, I think Bauer said it too, like Steph Curry could hit a shot from half court and it's everywhere on social media. But like a baseball player does something, one place has the exclusive rights to post that highlight video. Nobody else can do it. And I feel like baseball keeps hurting themselves in ways like that. And I feel like that's where Showdown would kind of get lost in translation too because they just keep finding ways to get in their own way. Yeah. Whereas the other major sports are like, we need to capitalize on whoever's famous for whatever they did. You know, it's like something stupid that they do and it's everywhere. Yeah, I could see like easily well, marketing you, Trout better when he's got the best MLB shutdown card. <laughs> yeah. Like it seems really yeah. fun and easy to do versus here's this really cool rookie card of Trout, which is really just really cool and obviously sold for a zillion dollars the other day on uh, online. But it'd be cool to say Trout like – Everyone knows, you know, been a, you know, spinning, you know, lights, and now here's like a marketing commercial. And it's like you could get the Mike Trout, like best player in baseball. He plays for the Angels, and I, oh yeah, and he's foil, and it's all amazing graphics and everything. And also, it's a digital app, or like you could get. I know they do. Um, I think it was Yu Gi Oh that you, if you bought the card, it has a code at the bottom, and you yeah, could you like could scan it. You could scan it or input the code, and then you would have it on the digital app as well. And that's like a twofold thing where you could do that and play digitally and have uh, collectible content as well. But I think they could do it. But like Matt said, I think they would almost hurt themselves. But I think someone as big as Tops could handle it pretty well. Donruss might have a, a little bit more of an issue. I mean, yeah. we we have a pretty good following right now, and people love what we're putting out. Um, but that's still such a small market. I feel like if you don't right, know yeah, about it, you don't know. Yeah, like if if you had you know teams like promoting it yeah. or players because like when once it's officially licensed, you know it could be like, hey, here's me doing a signing at this place for the card game. Oh yeah, like they used to do. Yeah, well, I think too. What's funny is when we're sitting here talking about some of these players from 15, 20 years ago. Um, I think about this with hockey sometimes. Like I don't know if any of you guys are hockey fans, mm -hmm. um, but. Like for me, like when when hockey highlights were on Sports Center, when the NHL was on ESPN, I felt like I knew all the hockey players. Yeah. And then it stopped being ESPN, and the Blackhawks in Chicago for a while were terrible. Like you just didn't know who these guys were. With baseball, I feel like I'm much more comfortable rattling off like the 2000, 2001, 2002 All Star team, even than I would be now rallying off like you know every year is my fancy baseball draft. Like who are some of these guys? Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, just any type of way that baseball can, like, up its marketing, up its familiarity people have with these players. Like, you want to be able to have people who have the Doug Brocale relationship with some of these guys. Or you want to be able to have a, as many outlets as possible um, where people can do that. And, I mean, Showdown was just such a perfect way yeah. for me, as you know, and for all you guys to have these affinities for players that you might not have ever heard of. And I, didn't and think, I think they have so many marketable players. Oh, like, yeah. During spring training, when they Especially did like, the, young the, guys. the mics, yeah, when the mics were on, and Acuna doesn't even speak English, and I was glued to the TV because he was hilarious, and I didn't know what he was saying half the time. And, right, I think it's kind of to Matt's point. Like, I, I've kind of been, I've thought a lot about if like could Showdown work today. Um, you know, I think that of course there was a lot going on with Magic and Pokemon back in that time that like this just were ha We were, I think, we were lucky to even get you know, this, just because it was a risk. It was like, just like your article said, like it was kind of like a, let's give it a try and see. But, um, you know, there's been a board game resurgence over the past decade, you know, like people are, you know, I think wanting to, you know, when video games took over, they wanted to kind of get away from that and get back to face to face, which is funny to say right now. But, um, but I think that, you know, there, there's, it's, I think it's just really the, the MLB just does feel like they like, kind of tripping over their own, you know, traps well, sometimes. The, so the biggest thing so also that they could capitalize on here is the biggest thing MLB needs is young fans. Like base basketball is killing it with young kids. Um, yep. And we played showdown as kids. All of us did. Cause it, a, it came out when we were all young and obviously we're, we're all roughly the same age now, but you're talking about now getting a kid to sit through a long baseball TV thing. Uh, sh like a, actually watching the game on TV. Sometimes it's a little hard but having a cool, fun game because the kids love Pokemon, they love Yu-Gi-Oh, they like these collectible cards and toys. 
okay, so now here's a card that you can collect, but also play with, you know, son or daughter. And, and now so it's like, oh my God, like, that's awesome. Now I want to watch him on TV. Remember that time we watched the guy from the Indians hit the home run? Well, here's his card. And I think you can grab younger fans that way in a better way than just uh, a sort of a tops collectible game where it's, or collectible card thing where it's like, okay, you're just collecting this to put in a binder, you know, and sit. Like it's, it's more fun for a kid and you're, you need to get the kids involved <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> um, oh, for sure. Um, I know we want to ask you a few more questions before we get out of here. One of the big ones I think I like, and I think you touched base on this a little bit, but I know Jeff wasn't on the first one, um, is what is your favorite card or card from a team from the 2000-2001 set? Uh, Bob, let me go into the shoebox here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See what I got. Well, I mean, for me, like Pedro was just, like that was the guy, right? I mean, oh, yeah. just, you know, having the one and nine strikeout and it was like, that was like the peak of Pedro. So that was pretty awesome. Um, you were the one that Bob that alerted to me. What a cool A-Rod card I have. I didn't even realize the, had, the Rangers one. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. That card's a stud. Yeah. 640 points. I mentioned earlier, I love the look of the Tony Fernandez. I love that Toronto Blue Jays blue and, you know, finding a, a 10 on base guy. So, I will say somebody pointed out to me um, as I was going through my cards, I had two uh, Carl Everett from uh, – I had had his regular one and his pennant run one, and he was on different teams. Yes, Astros and then the Boston Red Sox. And for no reason, they boosted him. They boosted him like a zillion – they made him like amazing when he went to the Red Sox for almost no reason. Yeah, he's like one of the best cards in the game. Yeah, he's like, a, and I, I, I don't, I barely knew who Carl Everett was when I got back into the game. Yeah, he's like, the, and I'm, I'm even going, I'm even going through like my favorite lineups here, guys. And I told you, like, I'm a Chicago baseball fan, which we don't need to get into. I like both Cubs and White Sox again. Don't need to get into it because that would take forever. But I didn't even have Cubs or White. The Cubs were garbage, so that's probably why I didn't have any Cubs <laughs> in my team. Um, the White Sox were good in 2000, but I really didn't have any of those guys. Uh, except for Kelly Wunsch, uh, middle Ke- reliever for the White Sox. Oh, Kelly okay. Wunsch, like, Bobby Howard. I, I know him. <laughs> I said we haven't done the White Sox. Yeah, yet, that's why we? I don't remember him. <laughs> right. I, I say we should. It, it, well, if you, I say if we can find the article, I'll send you the one that uh, Matter Peter did uh, with the championship, the one that they beat the Indians, which we all hate. The Cubs for, <laughs> but uh, but the team it's is a, like it's a fun team. The team right. is super good, and then obviously right now I think like. The Chris Bryant's and the, especially the Javi Baez is a weird one. So he's like a really, really good card. Like his chart is off the charts, but he's only a seven on base. So he's that weird range, like Ooh. really good fielding. He's like hit or miss in our leagues. But like it's the only way when you get his on base so low because of what he really did in, in baseball. And then hit the, um, uh, the, the, the counting stats he put up were just crazy. So you're like trying to balance those two. So it makes his card really interesting and fun he almost always gets drafted because he's a great fielder he's fast he's got uh, a ton of charts but that seven it's it's risky <laughs> uh who's your favorite player like right now oh good question um well i mean i i i love watching javi Baez. i really do i love watching javi Baez play um and then you again, I go, go Cubs and White Sox. I love Tim Anderson. He's got that flair. Yeah. You we know. just talked about making a bat, bat flip bat version flip. of him. <laughs> bat pro, flips pro, every day. You know? Yeah, pro bat flips here. So oh, yeah. my favorite player of all time was Mark Burley. That was my guy. That was I, I love I Burley. I still love the Mark Burley flip through the the legs with his glove. Yep. That was against Indians. That's how I remember seeing it going. That yeah. was the most it was opening day. <laughs> Yeah, right. he like had the play of the year on the first game of the season. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was amazing. <laughs> There's no better time to do it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying to see if I had the, um, cause I didn't want to look it up on the computer, but if I had the, uh, what Javi Baez was in 2019 and what the. Uh, I got his 2018 by me, I think. Yeah, I was trying to see if I had that or or um, Tim Anderson's card because he actually did pretty good in 20 2019. So we did all these different color borders and everything nowadays. Throwing me off. I know the twins were stacked. We were just talking to a guy about how I used to joke about how bad the twins were, but the 2019 version of the twins were just amazing. Oh, here we go. Here yeah, are the Cubs. Just... Yeah, Which one do you got? 
Well, I got Chris Bryant's version where he's a 10. He's a 10-18 home run. But uh, let's see where Javi is. I know he's a foil as well. There's Kevin, Rose. quick question. Like, with the uh, with the whole card collection, um, you know, kind of series that went on, like, in how much, like, I guess I don't know how much the athletic is kind of spread out across, like, the rest of the country. Like, I, of course, every, they're, you've got beat writers everywhere. Like, how did, like, the story just kind of get spread out? And, like, did you hear from other people kind of, like, within the company, like, in other places being like, you know, this, I didn't know this article was happening. This is, this is great. I used to, like, how did that go? Like, kind of internally. Yeah. Yeah, had a couple guys on staff who played it and, and reached out about it. Um, what was fun, too, was, you know, we have, you know, so we have a page on the app for every team. We also have just like an MLB page, like the top MLB story. So that was the top story on the MLB page that day. Thankfully, Ken Rosenthal didn't have any breaking news that day to uh, oh, yeah. knock it out of the you know, so that was that was that really certainly helped in terms of and, and for us it was a, you know it was a Chicago story so we we kind of had to put it under the Cubs and White Sox channel, um, so yeah so I mean it, it certainly uh, got a lot of eyeballs by being that kind of across the site. I was kind of hoping for more people to have uh, on staff who had played it before. Um, I, I had reached out to a couple people who were like, but you guys probably know because I um, you know we're right around the same age range. Yeah, like you you really if you weren't like a card person it was really easy to miss this game yeah like i was talking to two buddies who are diehard baseball fans one of them obsessed with lb showdown has every car from 2000 he's 31 the other one is like 39 had never heard of it before hmm. right. and that was the thing that was interesting about lb showdown to me is i feel like if you've heard of it you love it yeah. Like there's like there's no in between. Either you, you you've never heard of it, you never played it, or like, yes, that was a great game and I played it all the time. That was another kind of takeaway from talking to people. Is like I would say, Hey, have you heard of LB Showdown? Oh my god, I love that game. Or have you heard of LB Showdown? No. There was no in between. Which is probably a good thing if everybody that's played it loved it. Yes. <laughs> right. Like like I try like I, I keep like uh I wish I had more, but I used to have like some of the sealed two player from 2000 which they printed so many of and they're, they're they were so dirt cheap for so long i would keep them keep them and give them out to people that i think would like the game right yeah. which of course was like bad timing because like right now would have been the time to be playing with them but um but yeah it is uh i've, I've also played the same game like i have to be like kind of play coy and be like you heard of this you know baseball card game mlb showdown and then like the moment they're like oh yeah totally i like let the guard down I'm like oh my god like and i just like go a little crazy you know so but if they haven't heard of it it's like it's it's kind of like it try to explain it and it like doesn't super work out you know and i probably push them farther away from ever joining our league yeah, like, so. like i don't know this guy's Get away from me. <laughs> yeah, he's like, they're like, please, please get, you know, please so stay six I, feet. I just want to tell you then, Javi Baez for 2019 is a seven, plus five shortstop, B speed 19, one through three out with a 15 home run, doubles at nine. And you can kind of see his picture there on the 2019 version. But, uh, and people online have already seen these. And then Tim Anderson does have a, does have the bat flip going yeah, on. Yeah, I, I did that cut out. Yeah. It had to happen. Yeah, so he's got the you bat know? flip. He got the foil treatment he's a nine on base b speed 16 plus zero shortstop but uh still a fun card actually i love tim anderson too i think the bat flips are sick <laughs> i think he's gonna well i think i had him on my fantasy baseball team so i was like even more pumped <laughs> but that i think uh if anybody else has any other questions i think we i think we covered a lot of the points that we had um is there anything else kevin that you wanted to i don't know, let us in on um no i think that's it again i want to thank you guys again for your 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 parts in the story i'm glad bob i found you on facebook and was able to uh you were able to set up that zoom it was a, it was a great addition to the story and um and i'm glad and i appreciate you guys and all your listeners and all the people who still play for reading the story and um and if anybody subscribed thank you for that um but yeah i i now got an itch to go play my, my, i was uh, gonna say that that's my closing right, words is go play a game and let us know like how you yeah. did or, or what's it because i think I that's so, like the most fun of people i hear like even that colby guy told us like a random story that he had about it like stuck in his mind from like 10 years ago when he played this and this guy had this home run against him and he was like it's still in my head how he beat me like the last inning of the game that's really fun um when you can find those stories and uh and those connections i think so 
Yeah, Kevin, sure. make, get 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 uh you know get some practice in. I, I think Bob mentioned I'm working on Showdown Con yes. next year. You know, unofficial right. fan Showdown convention. You've got a spot already there, but uh, no, man, thank you, thank you for putting in the work there and putting that together. It was a joy to read. It was a joy to everybody. Um, yeah, really, really something special. Yeah, no, thank you again. And, and Bob, if there's a way to people haven't seen it yet, I can't imagine any realtors didn't read it. But uh, you know, it's still, still there. Go read it. Add more comments. We'll get to 100 comments. So if you guys are listening and you guys did not even know what we're talking about, I'll have a link probably in the YouTube video to the uh, article that Kevin wrote. And, uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully you guys have a chance to play. Uh, there are these two two-person starter sets that you guys can find around um, and uh, play it. Uh, it's a great game if you like baseball, if you just want to play like a relaxing card game that doesn't take a lot of rules. Again, don't add the strategy cards. It's, all you need is a dice. Um <laughs> A 20 sided dice and you can have a lot of fun especially i think with young kids um that just want to play some baseball maybe they missed out in the season or or missing baseball a little bit so i think with that uh thank you everybody for joining us